Last lesson, we learned to solve a system of linear equations by graphing. Today, we're going to learn to do it by substitution. And so, because sometimes graphing isn't always the easiest thing to do, but substitution always works in the sense of all we need to do is realize that we can replace an expression in one of the two equations with an expression from the other equation. Now, I want to not jump too fast into it in the sense of I want to help you understand that this top equation here is a line. It's a vertical line. If I was to graph it, I would have to come over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and graph this vertical line of x equals 6. So that's the equation x equals 6. If this is my y and my x-axis. Okay. The other equation, the one underneath it, obviously is another line and it's going to have some slope. I'm not sure exactly where the y-intercept would be. In fact, I don't even think it has a nice y-intercept. It's going to be some line that comes like this or whatever. I mean, it doesn't squiggle though. It's straight, but it intersects somewhere. I want to find where that intersects. The easiest way to find where that intersects is to realize that, hey, wherever they intersect, it's got to have an x value of 6. So that means I can substitute in this 6 into that x. That's what I'm doing. I'm substituting in. So I'm going to rewrite that second equation as a negative 8. Now, instead of an x, I'm substituting in what the other equation told me x was, which was 6. Minus 9y equals 15. Now I just solve for my y value. Negative 8 times 16 is negative 48. Minus 9y equals 15. I'm going to add 48 to both sides. I get a negative 9y equals 48 plus 15 is going to be 50, 63. And then I divide by my negative 9, and I get a y value of negative 7. Now, the solution, remember, is always a point. It's always an x value and a y value. I just found the y value. It's negative 7. Y value is negative 7, but it gave me the x value up here. X is 6, right? So there's my solution, the point 0.67. I was over 6 and actually down 7. So I drew my line completely in the wrong place. And maybe it's going down or something like that. So again, let's do another one. They might actually give you a horizontal line. So again, all I know is that this bottom equation, y equals 10, is a horizontal line way up here at 10 somewhere. I have some other line that's eventually going to intersect it. But that point where they intersect is going to have a y value of 10. So I'm going to replace the y in that first equation with 10. So I'm going to rewrite that first equation, 10x minus 5. But now instead of y, I'm replacing it with what that second equation told me y was, which is 10 negative 20, and now I solve for x. 10x minus 50, that's 5 times 10, equals negative 20. I add 50 to both sides, so I get 10x equals a positive 30. Then I divide by 10, and I get x is 3. Now that's not my final answer. That's the x value, or the x point, or the x value of the point of where those two lines intersect. So I also got to include the y value of 10. So my solution is the point 310. Now, we might not actually get a vertical or horizontal line. They both, both, both might be slanted. One might come up like this. One might come down like this. But we still need to find this point, And we have no clue what the x or the y is. But the process is the same. This bottom equation, equation says y is x. So guess what I'm going to replace that x with? I'm going to replace it with a y. So I'm going to go y equals 2 times y minus 4. Now what I'm going to do is solve. I got y equals 2y minus 4 minus 2y across. I get a negative y equals negative y equals, because I'm minus 2y from both sides, negative 4, cancel the minus sign or divide by negative 1, and I get a y value of 4. But I'm not done. I need to find my x value. But guess what? If y is 4, x is also 4. Now, I could have, instead of replacing the x 
with the y, I could replace the y with the x, and that would solve me for x. Let me show you what I mean. So because y is x, I can replace the y with an x, and that would let me find my x value in case I needed to find it that way. So I'd get x equals 2x minus 4, or minus 2x from both sides. I get, wow, not from there. Minus 2x minus 2x is negative x equals negative 4. Cancel the negatives, and x is also 4. Again, they might not give you just y equals x. They might give you a completely different line. So I now would make sure I take the variable that's alone. y is alone on both of these. And I'm going to replace the y in one of them with what the, it, the bottom one says it is. So in other words, I, y is this. So I'm going to replace this y with x minus 2. So that became that. I'm going to write my equal sign, 3x minus 4. Now I'm going to solve. Minus 3x from both sides. That's going to cancel. I'm going to be left with a negative 2x minus 2 equals negative 4, because those x's canceled. Add 2 to both sides. I get a negative 2x equals negative 2, because those cancel. Then I divide by negative 2. When I divide by negative 2, x is 1. Now I found my x value. I still need to find my y value. What I can do is I can plug it back into either equation. If I plug it into here, y equals 1 minus 2, or y equals negative 1. So my y value is negative 1. And let me show you that it works in the other equation. And this is a good way to check to make sure you did it right. Plug a 1 in here, and I should get the same value. y equals 3, that's my 3 here, times my x value of 1, minus 4. 3 times 1 is 3. What's 3 minus 4? Well, it's negative 1. So I did get the same y value. My point is 1, negative 1. Now, they might actually give you one where one of them's written in standard form versus slope-intercept form. But again, take the one that has the y by itself and replace the y in the other equation with what it says y is. So I'm going to replace that y with the 2x plus 7. So let's rewrite this top equation. Negative 7x plus 6 but now instead of y, I'm rewriting the top equation. But instead of y, I'm going to replace, I'm going to put what y is. y is, so, and always put parentheses, 2x plus 7. The reason you need to put parentheses is this 6 is times all of y, and this is all of y, equals 7. Now I need to distribute in my 6, negative 7x, and we've learned the distributive property. 12x plus 6 times 7 is 42 equals 7. Add the like terms. 12x minus 7x is 5x plus 42 equals 7. Let's minus 42 from both sides. I get 5x equals a negative 35. Divide by 5 and x is negative 7. So I just found my x value. Now let's quickly find my y value. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that negative 7 back in. So I'm going to go y equals 2. And remember, I'm plugging it back into one of the original equations. So I'm doing the bottom one at the moment. 2 times negative 7, because what's x? x is negative 7, plus 7. y equals 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, plus 7. Well, y is negative 7. So y is also negative 7. Now we can check. Let's come back up here and figure out if that works in the top equation. So I'm going to just take this top equation, do negative 7 times an x value of negative 7. I'm going to add that to 6 times an x value of negative 7, and that better equal 7. If it doesn't, we've done something wrong. Negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. 6 times negative 7 is a negative 42. 49 plus a negative 42 is 7. So it worked. That is our solution. Now, the hardest they're going to give you might just actually be two equations in standard form. But hopefully one of them will be very, very simple to isolate the y. In other words, rewrite one of the equations in slope-intercept form. 
So your first step would be to get one of the equations in this form and pick which one would be the easiest. The bottom one would be the easiest for this. I'm just going to add the 2x over. So this equation right here can be written as y equals 2x plus 9. What I did was I added 2x to both sides. Now I have a y by itself equals. Now I'm going to take the other equation and substitute in for that y. So let's rewrite this top equation, but instead of y, we're going to write this 2x plus 9, because that's what y is. So let's start, 8x minus 10. Now I put parentheses, because I'm going to times it by y, and y is 2x plus 9. Then finish your equation, equals 6. Now let's distribute. 8x minus 20x minus 90, that's negative 10 times 9, equals 6. 8x minus 20x will be a negative 12x. I'm going to add 90 while I'm at it. That's going to equal a 96. Divide by negative 12. And I get an x value of, I believe that's going to be 8. Negative 8, in fact. Negative 8. So now I have my x value. Remember, that's not the final answer. i got to still find out what my y value is. So I'm going to come back here and plug in my x value of negative 8. So I'm going to use this equation right here, negative 2 times negative 8, because that's what x is right here, plus y equals 9. Negative 2 times negative 8 is 16, plus y equals 9, minus 16 from both sides, and I get y equals a negative 7. So now I have a y value. So my coordinate is a negative 8, negative 7. I want to make sure this is right, so I'm going to try it in the top equation. What's 8 times negative 8? 8 times negative 8 would be negative 64. What's negative 10 times negative 70? Negative 10 times negative, or sorry, negative 7. Negative 10 times negative 7 is going to be positive 70. And that better equal 6 when I add them. And guess what? It does. So I've done it correctly. If you have any questions, please do bring them to class and I will help you then.